muscles. So if that muscle's tight, it can reproduce the symptoms of carpal tunnel and it's just a tight spasmatic muscle, the pronated teres. Very common. It's called pronated teres syndrome. Now you don't need to know that for a test. And why do I teach that? It's because it comes alive. This muscle now comes alive to me. I mean, for me it does. It makes sense, you know. If someone you know has carpal tunnel symptoms, what's the first thing you're going to check? You palpate the forearm. Stand up for me. In my guinea pig today. Turn and face the cameras. All the cameras are on you, right? So you, you palpate. You palpate right from. It comes from the, the humerus over like a triangle, right? I'm sorry. It goes this way, from the medial side, right? So the medial epicondyle over this way, and you just palpate and see if it's in spasm. It's fine on there. But what happens when people carry a lot of those plastic bags? It's very common. You're holding them like this. You're trying to rush to get into the house, and you're doing this stuff with it. You carry those bags. People tend to get problems in their wrist, and really a lot of it starts here. Besides the neck. How do you know that it's Extra credit. <laughs> Just no, kidding. <laughs> so this is your pronated teres. What number is that? Number 16 on the small model is the pronated teres. And then now it's easy to memorize the rest of them. Because you got one going on the radial side, one going on the ulnar side, and you got a couple in the middle. So let's do the easy one, the one on the radial side and the one on the ulnar side, right? So this is a flexor, right? This is coming off the medial epicondyle. It's going to the carpal area on the radial side, so it's the flexor, flexor carpi radialis. Isn't that easy? This one going down here is also a flexor because it's coming off the medial epicondyle. Goes to the wrist or the carpal area. And it's on the ulnar side, so this is the flexor, flexor carpi ulnaris. So here, pronated teres, flexor carpi radialis on the lateral side, excuse me. On the medial side, flexor carpi ulnaris, right? Now, on the top, let me show you something here. You ever hear of a retinaculum? I'm sure you did. Okay, a retinaculum is this fiber right here. See this white fiber? You have two retinaculums of the wrist that kind of wrap around the wrist like an ace bandage. One's a little superficial like this one, and one is deep. If you have carpal tunnel sy syndrome, the surgery for that is a carpal tunnel release. You just take your little scalpel, you open up the skin, and you release here, and you go deep and you release there, boom, and it exposes it, and it breathes now, the nerve has more room. You're done. Sew them up, $6,000, whatever it is, and I'm just close. You've seen those surgeries? How long does it take them to actually do that? Chip, snip, snip. Probably don't even see it. That's how fast it is, right? I've done it since school, though. What's that? I haven't done it since school. You haven't done it since school? So they're very fast, easy, simple surgery, non-invasive. They, they did try to do it orthoscopically, but it's too messy orthoscopically. It's better to go in there and open up and see what's going on. Okay, so that retinaculum, notice, on top of the retinaculum, very superficial is the tendon from this muscle. Let's follow this one in the middle down. It's on top, right? Right where that little thing is. comes all the way down and it stops. It's cut. If you feel it and look at it, you can see it's on top of that retinaculum, right? That's going to go to the muscle, the skin of the palm. And it's called the palmaris longus. See how it's cut there? One right in the middle. What number is that? And the small model? 18? That's the palmaris longus, and it shows a cut there. It wrinkles the palm and starts the flexion of the wrist, right? Underneath that, how many people saw Mary Poppins? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, even though the sound of it made sound atrocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. This is the flexor uh, flexor. Flexor digitorum superficialis. Flexor digitorum superficialis. You got to sing it. You can't say it. Flexor digitorum superficialis. Now wait a minute. It doesn't look so superficial, does it? Because it's under the palmaris longus. So remember, that palmaris longus is on top, and it just wrinkles the skin. It's a very superficial muscle. But as far as flexes of the of the wrist, of the digits. This is the flexor digitorum superficialis. Underneath would be, lo and behold, the most profoundly deep one, flexor digitorum profundus. 
most <laughs> profoundly deep one. Right? And this is all just flexing the wrist. Flexes the wrist, yep. Yeah. yeah, the palmaris assists in flexion because it wrinkles the palm and starts that, right? Okay. So, let's review. You ready? Pronated teres. Flexor carpi radialis, flexor carpi ulnaris. Palmaris longus, flexor digitorum superficialis, flexor digitorum profundus. Not bad, right? Now, let's do the extensors. On the extensor side, we have a unique muscle that doesn't ex uh, assist in extension of the wrist, but it's more of a flexor of the arm. It's the one that does that hammer movement. You know, the hammering movement, or if you're a track star and you train in the weight room, they always have you do hammers to help your, your pump when you run, doing straight up like that. And if you do hammers with the weights, you take it, just do this kind of exercise. And notice my thumb is straight up. This is called the brachioradialis. Notice it's coming off above the lateral epicondyle, isn't it? The lateral epicondyle will be somewhere around here, medial epicondyle here, right? Right at that level. Just slightly above that is called the supracondylar ridge, and that's where the brachioradialis is coming off. So this is the brachio, the first one here is the brachioradialis, and it's more of a flexor of the arm. Now, if you read about this muscle, you're probably going to get a gestalt, and you're going to say, huh? Because it says it flexes the arm, and it supinates and pronates the forearm. How does a muscle do both of those? Because it's the opposite movements, right? How can that muscle do both opposite movements? It's very easy. Depends on the starting position. Because this is attached right by the styloid of the radius, all the way down to the point by the thumb. So if your hand is in this position, that's pronated, right? And then I flex with my brachial radialis, it brings it up. See that? So that's actually taking it from a pronated position and supinating it up, isn't it? Then if my hand was in the supinated position and I flexed the brachial radialis, it would bring it up also this way. So that would pronate it, right? You get it? Is it better, is it better to lift weights like, like that or like that? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Yes, it depends on what you're trying to do. All is good, right? So the brachial radialis flexes the arm and supinates and pronates the forearm. Don't worry about that supination and pronating the forearm business right now. I just wanted to bring that to your attention so that in the future when you're reading it, you're not thrown off so much. You know, yeah, I remember that. He said something about that, that it depends on your starting position. And the way I taught this in kinesiology is that if you have a rowboat and it's tied up to the dock, and the back of the rowboat still comes out a little bit, and the, the rope is on either the back or the front, depends on how it's sitting and how you pull it, right? So you can pull it in the back end first or the front end, right? You can do that with a rowboat trying to get it in and kind of pull it too much. So it depends on the starting position of the rowboat, how it's going to move, right? It's the same thing with the hand, depends on the starting position. God bless you. So that first one is really a flexor of the forearm, brachio radialis. That's the one where you get that reflex where you had to extend the hand up, remember that? Okay, now we have a couple of muscles here. This one right here, number, is that number? Number 20. Number 20. This is the extensor carpi radialis longus, and right next to it, 21, is the brevis. So you have an extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi radialis brevis. See that? Okay, and we got that? It's very brevis. Very brevis? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so don't worry about these abductors right now. Let's come over to the extensor of the wrist here. And this first one, notice where the tendons are going, to the middle three fingers, right? Yeah. So that's the extensor digitorum. What number is that? 30. This is on the small model, number 30. Extensor digitorum, coming all the way down to the digits. See that? And then you have this little tiny, teeny, weeny, itsy bitsy one going down, and that's the extensor digiti minimi. See that? Extensor digiti minimi. Coming down to the pinky, right? Spot the T, right? When you drink tea, you're extending your digiti minimi, right? It's that 